Yeah. I can't believe it. How are you, Hi, buddy? Reed. Good to see How you. How are you? Good I'm to see okay. you. I'm so glad to see you. I'm wearing. I'm, I've changed it up. I'm outside. Charlie, stay close in case we have technical di difficulties. Charlie's been helping. Thank um, you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. But honey, honey, hold on, honey, keep that door open so if I scream for you. That's <laughs> that's how it works around here. Yeah. There we go. Love it. Reed, thanks for doing this today. Of course, I'm coming to you live from my my yurt in Marrakesh here. Yeah, that's cool, man. <laughs> I'm I'm in the African safari. It's gorgeous there. Good for you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. You. Yeah, I really dig it. That's why I'm wearing this this out of Africa hat. Nice. Actually, it's to cover my gray. So um, before we start yakking, I want to do a quick <clears throat> shout out to the following people who've just recently donated. And here are their names. Catherine O'Connor, Gianna Fiore Fiorito. I hope I said that right. Uh, Margie, Nanita Cran Cranford, Marcelo Desio, Peter Kelly, Linda K. Johnson, Amanda Whitaker, Leanne Niels, Sharon Stinestra, Monique McCurtry, Kate Williams, Brianna, Jude G, Paige Pepper, Barbara Boots, and Monique McCurdy, and Carla Saunders. The, okay, so just to refresh everybody's memories, we're doing these conversations in an effort to support Direct Relief, which is this fabulous organization that provides support to uh, healthcare workers on the front lines. And um, they're doing a magnificent job, the healthcare workers and direct relief and any support we can give them would be great. So there's a, there's a thing here that I pinned, yep. see it, that donate it bit.ly thing. And so if you click on that, you can donate and we'll take a, a little break and get water or something to walk away from a conversation some, at some point so that people can leave this and go donate and then come back. Great. Okay, so that was my spiel. Um, Reed, how are you doing? We're doing okay. Um, I was texting you yesterday or the day before. Yeah. And I mentioned that I'm like oddly built for this. Yes. And it's it's funny because you know my wife Elspeth, who's like the, the sunniest, happiest person on the face of the planet. Yes. And I'm I'm a very sardonic, you know, bristly kind of prick most of the time. Yeah, that's how I think of you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Mm. Um, and we've completely switched roles. The 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 first week of the shutdown. I was actually kind of happy, I mean, not happy because of the circumstance, but happy to be home because I was actually in New York shooting something. And mm. so I was kind of happy to get out of there mm. and also happy to just be home and check on the kids and, and yeah. my wife and everything. So the first week was okay. Second week was a little depressing because it was sort of like the reality was setting in and yeah. you know, Gavin Newsom was telling us about all the moments that we had to meet. And if I meet one more fucking moment, I'm just going to lose my mind. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> and then I sort of like settled into this routine of fixing stuff around the house and cooking. And my, my two little kids are, are, are small or five and two. So yeah. for them, this is like an extended vacation. And I, I, I don't know. I kind of like being home with the family a little I'm, bit. I'm and, surprised you're not wearing a tool belt right now. When you told me that. Oh, I, I am. If, if, if I pan down, no, <laughs> I don't have anything on. Oh down. God, I wish you had had one on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we're doing okay. You know, we're trying to do things many as many things like this as we can. I got some some good friends back in New York City who are who are doctors. One of my good friends, Vikas Varma, is an incredible spinal surgeon who's been donating his time. Wow. He just doesn't sleep anymore. He just he when he's not when he wasn't. Did you say um, he's in New York? Is that what he's in said? New York? Yeah, he was at um, uh, Mount Sinai, actually. Wow. Wow. And so he's been working, he's been volunteering in the ER and he, he contracted COVID-19 oh. from being in the ER so much. So he's absolutely one of the people that we're talking about, the first responders that, that need help like this. Um, that personal protective gear. Um, is everything. Is everything. Yeah. yeah. And that was another thing too, that when, when I say I was built for this, I, I'm from the East Coast. So living in California always kind of freaked me out with earthquakes and stuff. And I bought a bunch of earthquake kit kits like four or five years ago. 
Yeah. My wife thought I was being paranoid. She's from San Francisco, so none of this stuff phases her. And I opened it up. I opened up all the earthquake kits, and sitting right on top were like 15 uh, N95 masks and gloves and all Did this. You? You're built for this. That, that, that we donated. We sent it in. So it, it's. Oh, you donated a, it. Oh, yeah. good for you. Yeah. Oh, God. I thought you were going to say you were like. Um, uh, hoarding it? <laughs> hoarding it for yourself. Well, I mean, if you go, I also, there's a link in my bio to my, um, to my eBay account. And if you go there, I'm auctioning off. They're used. They're lightly They're used. used. Right. They're lightly used. Yeah. Lightly used. That's fine. I'm sure yeah. the price is relatively, you know, it's a competitive price. It's not bad. It's not yeah. bad. He's kidding in case anyone is not picking up on his sarcasm. Yeah. So, hey, listen, um, did you watch... Um, did you watch that episode? We were going to, we, we were talking about watching an episode and talking about it from one of the earlier seasons. And he thought it would be fun to watch full disclosure, which was kind of amazing to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it too. What was your, and it was, it was a show in season one. It's episode seven. It was directed by Chris Morris. It was written by Roger Drew and Ian Martin. Yep. yep. Um, and so what was your like takeaway when you were watching it? What what came back to you about that time? And that was these were early days, yeah? Yeah, early days. We were, like you said, still in season one. We were we were still figuring out so many things about the show. One one of the yeah. things that struck me watching it was that um the characters all ended up in very different places. I mean, like you really could see the growth, like like Matt Walsh's character, Mike was like a little, I don't know if sharper is the right word, but he's like a little more acerbic and a little more cutting and a little more yeah, sort of, sort of, vi sort of vicious. A little more vicious. Yeah. And not, not quite as stupid as he became. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think Dan wasn't quite as vapid. I mean, by the end, you know, Dan just skipping stones at the lake. You know, oh, yeah. w wondering right. about his future. I mean, I don't think he ever would have done that in season one. Um, so it was sort of fun to see the the the, the growth of some of the characters. But um, I don't know. I always loved that episode because it just it was such a manic episode. I mean, anything shooting with Chris Morris is always going to be a manic episode. Yes, yes. Chris Morris is a, a great director from the UK who's who's uh, a tad nuts, which is why he's so good of course but yeah. uh yeah it is a little bit crazy uh working with him in particular i was i was sort of struck watching this how um and i, I this occurred to me with other episodes from season one too how there were certain themes though i heard a hawk just go by there were certain themes that you see in the final episode of the sh of the yeah of the sh series Yep. which was kind of amazing. And they were in in place and you sort of like they were, oh, I wrote this down. Oh, so when when Selena says to Gary, when he comes in to offer his reg resignation and mm -hmm. she says, I'm not I'm not going to let go the one person in this core group who actually gives a shit about me. And I I thought to myself, first of all, I'd completely forgotten that moment and I, I don't know. I just thought that was absolutely remarkable. And by the way, when he came in to offer his resignation and you and um, Amy, Amy or Anna and Matt are sitting on the couch and you're so delighted that he's going to resign and you sort of go like that. That was hilarious. <laughs> uh, it was, every, I don't know. It, it, season one, we, we all talk about it, how it was, it was such a crazy time because we were still figuring out the show and figuring out the characters and figuring out the dynamics between everybody. But looking back on that, it was that energy, that sort of uncertainty that we as actors all felt comes across really well through the characters because they're all just trying to figure their jobs out, figure out this new situation, this new dynamic. Um, yeah, there's a there's an anxiety that yeah. is present uh that I think was a part of sort of making the show, but also certainly informed performances and, and was uh, appropriate because the world we were in was nothing but anxiety, right? right. These characters were in. Yeah, that's a good point. 
Yeah, it was fun. I, I love that scene too with you um, and Anna at the end when you're sort of leading her down the path to the solution with the, the pregnancy rumor. And it's, it's, it, it's what became such a classic Selena move. You see it in the last two seasons a ton when she's right. really got her claws out. Right. How she can just, she's a, such a master manipulator, but always with that smile, that smile that you have right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not like that, Reed. No, on, of course man. not, of course not. Now, I wanna make sure that some of these questions that are coming in, yeah. oh, I miss Veep, that's so nice. We miss Veep too. But I just wanna remind people to ask questions because we're not getting a lot of them. We're just getting a lot of, what avenue do I find this sitcom? What does that even mean, avenue? It's on HBO. And it's streaming for free right now. It is, which is amazing yeah. that they did that. That's really cool. Yeah, it's very, very cool. Um, We've got some new donations, I see that. Yeah, tell who donated. Uh, Shannon Jameson, Diana Hunter, David Hogan, uh, yep. Lu Ludovica Pelliccioli. Did you? Did, is that the one? Pelliccioli. Pelliccioli. Yeah. Pelliccioli. She's awesome. Uh, would Selena know better than to tell us to drink bleach? Huh. She might, she tell, might tell one of staff. her staff. She might tell one of the staff to drink bleach, you know? Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> but she would know why she was telling them to drink bleach. Oh, uh, hey, so we got to talk of, uh, for a second. Can we talk about Biden, like reaching out and like, wanting to tack you to be the V? I, that is so cool. That is so cool. That was so, that was such an amazing thing. I saw, I woke up and I saw that that had been on James Corden and, I mean, it was absolutely hilarious. I couldn't get over it, actually. Um, <laughs> did you see what I tweeted back? I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, what other options were there to end the Veep series? Other options? Hmm. Um, well, did we have, what? Did we have other sort of options on the table? Did, that was sort of... No, we always sort of knew, uh, actually a few years prior, that she was going to end up in the position of president. And it was right. just a question of how did she get there and the bumpiest way way to get there. So yeah. um, so that was, that was, there weren't any other really, uh, uh, any other options. Does Selena have any regrets on how she raised Catherine? <laughs> Who? Who? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the perfect. I, I, I still, I still come back. One of my favorite Catherine lines or Selena lines to Catherine of, of all time is just, "Oh, Catherine, why is that your hair?" <laughs> I know. <laughs> it still gets me. It's a good one. And yeah. by the way, ironically, Sarah Sutherland, who played Catherine had the most gorgeous hair. And I remember in that episode thinking, it doesn't, I mean, it's so, um, it's such an arbitrary and bizarre insult. It's not grounded in reality at all because she has this beautiful blonde hair. I'm looking at it and for some reason, Selena finds it completely uh, <laughs> repulsive looking. God only knows why. Um, what was the most embarrassing scene to film? What was embarrassing? Did you have an embarrassing scene? Yeah, I had a couple. I, I know. I oh, mean, really? getting into the speedo on the coldest day of the year in Coney Island. I mean, it was like eighteen degrees or something like that, and then right. running into the Pacific Ocean, covered in self tanner and like warming lotion. Th that'll that'll stick with me for a while. Warming lotion. What yeah, the they had this stuff. They had the stuff that like the uh, like the polar bear club guys use, and like those like uh, Olympic. Um, oh, it's like a Iron, land Iron Man swimmers. Of... Yeah, and it just sort of like insulates your body and stuff. So I was like, literally, I was greased like a watermelon, and they just had to run into the ocean over and over and over. Um, oh. Thank you to Brad, your husband Brad, directed that. Yes, episode. that's yes. right. Brad was directing that episode. Good old yeah. Brad. Yeah. What else? You said a few scenes. What were other scenes that were embarrassing? Um, 
I get, well, I mean, it's not really embarrassing, but it was really fun. In the last, the last episode or the last season, when Dan and Selena end up in bed together. Oh my God! How much fun it was, was just, that? It was so silly. And by the way, do you remember when we were? Uh, this didn't. This you were just goofing around, or we were it just in bed. And remember, you kept trying to uh, cozy up to me. Cuddle. <laughs> Dan's a secret Selena's, cuddler. He just wants to be held. His mommy he just issues. Wants to be held. And Selena has no interest in that. Not a bit. You know? No. No. She's just like going to stub the cigarette out on his chest and kick him out. Totally. And she did, in fact. <laughs> yeah, that's right. God, that was so funny. That was so funny trying to keep it together in those outtakes. There was a um, moment in the full disclosure episode, there was a moment that I remembered having such a hard time not laughing when Walsh is sitting on the arm of the sofa when we're coming up with the suicide <laughs> pact. Yeah. And his, 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 his bushy mustache, just like tickling my ear and his hot <laughs> breath whispering into my ear. <laughs> oh my God. It was just so moist and damp. It was really, it was hilarious. And we have outtakes of that too. That's like in the, the uh, blooper reel. You just could barely get through it. <laughs> <laughs> And he kept whispering for a really long time. That's a long scene. Oh my God. And he just did it over and over. I mean, yeah. Matt's one of the greatest improvisers ever. So he just went on and on and on and on and on and with on that thing. and on. I was just biting my tongue. I want to remind everybody to please, if they can, if they, if they can even the smallest amount to donate to direct relief. And the link is, yes, is um, here somewhere in this internet world. So click on it and donate. Um, do you think Dan would ever run for office? Well, absolutely. Well, not if, except you think he would even after like post the finale. Oh, post. I, well, actually. Oh no, no 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 no. You don't think I, so? I think, I, no, I, I I think Dan's the kind of guy that would, but I think when we see where he ends up, so happy to be, you know, king of Manhattan Beach real estate. Yeah. I mean, making that's... a fortune. Yeah, he's loving it. Yeah, he's loving it. And he's got his wife who's like 22 or whatever. Yeah, right. yeah I think we timed it out so that she would have been born <laughs> in in 2019 or something like that, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Good for Dan. <laughs> hey, somebody wants to know what was your audition pr process like for the show? What was that like? For oh, that's a good question. Um, I was living in New York um, and my, my agent sent me the script. I was, I was working on a, on a TV show called The Big C at the right. time and they sent me the script for Veep. And I was pretty familiar with, with Armando yeah. from The Thick of It um, and In right. the Loop. And I think at the time, I don't know if you were officially attached, but what they told me I think was that you were like, you were considering the part uh -huh. At that point. Okay. And that was obviously a huge plus to me because I was a big fan of yours as well. And so I, I read the script. Well, I, just, I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. The script was great. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And so I got, I went in to go meet with um, Armando and Frank Rich. Um, mm -hmm. And Anna was there as well. And we just did some improv exercises. Oh, and this was all in New York. Yeah. This was all in New York. Yeah. So I, I probably had the script for maybe a month or so. So by the time I met with them, you were officially on board. I went in there and met with those guys and we played a little bit and Anna and I read a couple of the scenes, but then Armando just said, um, just talk to me as Dan. I just want to have a conversation with Dan. Mm. And I think I, I, I'm not as gifted as an improviser as a lot of the other people on the show. Oh, stop I, it. I learned from you guys. I was really nervous about it. Like I had a little bit of experience from doing some stuff in New York, some improv. But I, 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 working on Veep was like a master class, like working with you guys. And, and by the end, I felt very comfortable with it. And now I absolutely love it. And I'm spoiled rotten and I can't learn lines to save my life because, yeah. you know, I just love sort of the freedom that we had to sort of make the words our own. But I kind of just, I remember sort of just going like blacking out and just kind of going on some Dan riff and just answering him. He just asked me questions. And I just gave him very Danish answers to his questions. Like, you know, it wasn't even backstory stuff. It was just kind of like, what do you, what do you love about politics? You know, what, uh, 
where do you see yourself in 20 years, blah, 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 blah. And, wow. and it was just fun. It just felt, it just felt yeah. right. And even in the room, I think our had sort of looked at me and was like, yep, that's right. That's good. Yep. Yeah. It was, I, it was, it was, it was, it was playing. It was, it was like, playing. it was playing. Yeah. And we did that a lot. I mean, even as part of the rehearsal process, we did that. Um, uh, as part of the, even part of the writing process, a lot of the, improv was sort of folded in the show was absolutely written but there was improv on top of it that got layered in and somebody asked that question mm -hmm. um and <laughs> right what are you seeing somebody asked me would i ever wear julia's hat this hat no he yeah. wouldn't no no i don't think so no well you know why because i'm not taking it off because <laughs> i didn't put that shoe polish in my hair to cover up my gray roots <laughs> so terrible um here's a good one what? How much how much footage is shot for every episode? And can you oh. talk about the shooting schedule? How many days worked on set? Ooh. I mean, we always talked about that there's so much stuff from our show that ended up on the cutting room floor. Huh. More than a normal show. Yeah, I know. I mean, I uh, we would usually, the first cut would come in and it would usually be a, easily 20 minutes too long. Yeah. So it took a lot of, uh, we have, we've had through the whole run of Veep, the most incredible editors um, who, and you know, I think the editor <clears throat> is uh, one of the unsung heroes of the business because particularly when it comes to comedy, do you really have to have a comic ear to hear, uh, to hear the edit properly? That's right. And, um, but the shows were always super long. At, from the beginning all the way to the end, super long. And I think uh, a lot, I mean, towards the end there, we were doing, I don't know, seven day week, seven days per episode. I can't really remember. I think that's- Which is, okay. yeah, which is really unusual for a half hour comedy. I mean, usually you get five yeah. days and you're out. Right, exactly. That's, it was kind of a luxury to have that long leash. That was really, I think it helped make the show as special as it was, the fact that we were just sort of allowed to go into our little lab and just sort of do what we needed to do. Totally. Yeah, yeah completely. Oh, we've got new donators here. Daedra Smith, Jennifer Bush, uh, Brooks Lanry, Lionel Ch uh, Chow, uh, Emily Finton, Diana Goldfeder, Christine Ventrella, Will Steffen, Mandy Forrester and Margaret Cullen. Thank you all so much for donating. Amazing. Um, amazing. Uh, hey, Reed, did yeah. you have a favorite Dan and Amy scene? Somebody wants to know. I've had a bunch of really fun scenes. I mean, the, the most memorable is going to be the abortion doctor scene. Oh, God. Just because it was... I mean, the whole last season got dialed up to like a 12. It totally. just got, yeah, and, I, and I loved it. It was so yeah. it was such a great way to say goodbye to the show. So having a scene like that, which I, I, I don't know if it would, it, it would have felt so out of place to go that big and that brutal earlier in the show. Oh, but, totally, yeah. I mean, there's, a, I don't know how much made it off the top of my head, but there's a, at one point, I remember David Mandel said, you know, do anything you want. So I started, I went on this whole improv tear about the actual abortion vacuum machine <laughs> and how it was like this beautiful shade of seventies, like Corvette Stingray orange. And like, oh my God, this is like a classic. This is like, as if he's looking at an old classic car. And it was, just, and I looked up and the entire crew was just like, you're, you're, you're a monster. You're an absolute monster. Um, yeah, that was kind of incredible. That was, that was an incredible episode. Horrible. Horrible. <laughs> yeah, horrible. But she was a great scene partner. We had, like, it was fun that their relationship was so unique. Rocked. Like, and yeah, it never quite got, you know, I'm glad they never went total, like, you know, Sam and Diane kind of thing. No. There was the extra layer of the fact that whatever Sam and Diane element might be there was undercut by the fact that they truly sort of hate each other. Yeah. So it was, and they were so competitive with one another. It was, it was a fun character to play with. And they're both so unable to have real relationships, generally speaking. Yeah. I mean, yeah. all, all of the people in the show, I think, have uh, 
dysfunction are, are, are nothing but dysfunctional relationships sort of in process, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? With mm -hmm. one another and even with their families and stuff like that. God damn it. Um, <laughs> do you think anyone from the office visited Gary in prison, Reed? No. I, actually, I feel like... I think Selena anybody... might. Do you think Selena might, even though they said she didn't? I think I, I could sort of see a moment where she got there and like, you know, even went through security and like, you know, got her yeah. clearance and then at the yeah. last minute, you know. Turned around. Yeah, she probably saw him like, you know, handcuffed to the little sort of meeting table in like the, the little common room. Then I was like, no, nah, I can't do it. And walked out, just left them there, stood him up in prison. Like something like really heartless. But to her, she's like, I tried. You got to give me credit for trying. You get a cut and you get a shot of him real tight going oh, when he yeah. sees her and just sees her walking away. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I think if anybody actually would have visited, it'd probably be like um, Kent Davidson or something like that would have brought him. Yeah. Like a... Right. Or Mike McClintock might have wanted to, but maybe he goes to the wrong prison. But, yeah. Something yeah. like that. He goes to the wrong spot. Or he brings him. He brings him a cake, and then they tell him, "I'm sorry, sir, you can't bring a cake in." So he just sits in his car, and eats the cake. <laughs> oh shit! Um, can you talk about Selena's memoir, her audiobook? Yes. So that's a real book that's out that you can buy, and um, God damn it, what's it called? Uh, what, uh, woman first, first woman. First woman. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was actually written by Billy Kimball and Dave Mandel together. And uh, it was, it's really pretty magnificent. And then we got to do the audiobook version of it, which was nuts. <laughs> I've never read a book faster in my life. And then there's, the, so if you read the book, it's one thing. The audio book is a different, it, it's another way to experience the book because we have a lot of characters in the, in the show coming in to read certain parts for, and we try to make it as believable as possible. It's, it was, it's pretty out there, but it's gobs of fun. I mean, if you don't have anything else to do in this shelter in place moment. Um, uh, how do you guys keep it together for the croissant insult scene? Hey, Reed, oh, what, yeah. what episode was that? That was the first season. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely first season. That's, is that is that the last episode maybe uh uh not of season 1 it, it's all those papers and yeah i don't know it, i it's not it's not the last one cuz i watched the last one but um that was a really fun scene to shoot as i recall right i i can't have a, a buttery french pastry without thinking of that scene it's going <laughs> to make forever <laughs> you get all hot and bothered yeah <laughs> um what else do we have oh did you see that bird go by no um looks beautiful there by the way my god yeah, it's a pretty day here in California. It is. Say. It's, it's hot, really, right? Yeah, yeah, it's hot. It's really hot. Um, so should we take a break and ask people to just go to this link really quick? Yeah. How about that great idea? Let's actually cool. take a break. I'm going to walk away from this thing for like uh, 45 seconds and get more water or more ice in my water and then come back. And that gives people a chance to click on the thing and donate. Yeah. And I'll just sit here and, and whistle. Yeah, you whistle. Yeah, I'll be okay. right back. I'm going to okay. go get ice. Don't, okay. But the thing is still going. Come yeah. back. Okay. Come back. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so here is um, my version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. No, you can't talk now. <laughs> you have to be quiet because otherwise they won't leave. Oh, got it. Okay. Because they have to go and donate. Got they it. don't okay. have to if they would like to donate <laughs> to direct relief. Please do. See you in a bit.
Did we leave? No. No. There I'm you back. are. Hi. Hi. It's got ice. Got ice. Hey, two things I want just occurred to me. One is, um, can you talk a little bit about um, about like the the research and the meeting of people that you did in D.C. Read because I know you had a couple of pretty interesting conversations with. Yeah. 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 Um, um, particularly early on, I think, right? Yeah, that was really fun. That was, again, another really unique part of our show is that we, we, we had some pretty cool access to some real movers and shakers in D.C. And uh, yeah. this one particular meeting, Matt Walsh, who's from Chicago, is friendly with some members of the, the Daly family, the legendary political family in Chicago. So he reached out to some of those guys and they had some cousins and some contacts. So he got a couple people together. I have a couple friends who worked on Capitol Hill that I reached out to. So they came and I think Tony had a friend or two. So we took, I think it was four or five young staffers to drinks one night at this bar and we let them pick the bar and it was the diviest dive bar that I've ever been to. But it was um, like a, a like a inside the beltway kind of divey place. Like yes. a lot of politicos would go there. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean it was. Yeah, it was weird. It was almost like a heavy metal, like trucker bar. But that's mm -hmm. I, I think, and we we have an episode where you know we, we sort of were inspired by that. So so Jonah drags Dan to oh, that heavy yeah. metal show, right. and it's all full of DC staffers who just have so much pent up rage and anxiety that they just go crazy <laughs> yeah. to get it out. That was inspired by this meeting. But we sat down with these guys and girls who are all lovely and incredibly smart and very young, so much younger than we thought. Yeah. And they all walked in and they all took out their cell phones and sort of almost showed us their cell phones. And then they laid their cell phones face down on the table, almost like a gunslinger would in the Wild West, sort of take your gun out and lay it down and say, we're not yeah. going to have any shooting here tonight. Right. And then they proceeded to get very drunk and tell us everything about their bosses, like stuff that they're like, oh my God, what do you want to know? They loved it. They could not divulge enough inappropriate information. And so now I have, now I have a national security clearance because of that one meeting. <laughs> you remember when we met that one staffer who worked for a senator at the time, I think she was his chief of staff or yeah. a scheduler, I can't remember. And she scheduler. was talking, yeah. what? Scheduler, yeah. Scheduler. And she was, she the was Sue. Yeah, and she was talking about how she slept with her phone on, neck, on the pillow next to her bed. Yeah. Because he would often reach out to her in the middle of the night, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Because he needed X, Y, or Z, or he was traveling and, you know. That and, poor girl, uh, she's just poor girl, but like. She said that with such pride, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're they're badasses. They all work so hard, but they just all seem so just crushed yeah, <laughs> at the I end know. of the day. I know, yeah. totally. It was, it's a, it's a, and that's why, of course, particularly I would say with uh, Tony Hill's character, Gary, why it was so pathetic that he stayed in this position for as long as he did, you know, decades really yeah. as the, as the bag man, because normally people would would not uh, tolerate that lifestyle for more than a couple of years at a time. We've got new donators, by the way, Linda and Emmett Clark and Casey Elliott, Nicole Vollmer, oh Christina Gab. Look at that. Harriet Ware, Christina Gabriel, Jenny Z, Maya Paterna, Peter Farmer, Eric A, Catherine Wilson, Bo, Ben Feldman. God, that's so oh, Ben Feldman. Ben, my buddy, Ben. How nice. Thanks, yeah. Ben. That's Thanks, so ben. nice of you. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh God, what do you do to stay calm during this time? What do you do to stay calm? I smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> do you really, for true? I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's helping you. See, I can't smoke weed because I go yeah. crazy. Makes yeah. me annoyed. Um, no, I mean, I don't smoke that much, but I do, I do enjoy it. And it does yeah. help keep me calm. Um, drinking for me is, I enjoy a drink here and there, but it's mm, not good to drink yeah. too much. Uh, honestly, I've been spending just a lot of time outside, you know, and, and playing with yeah. my kids. It, it's, I think I, and I think a lot of people can probably relate to this 
um, especially in this business too. I don't know. Maybe you can relate. I, I think I suffer from FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. Yeah. And in, in this business and in this town and in this yeah. this age, this information age, you always, especially on things like social media, you always feel like you're missing out on something. Yes. If, if you're not there, if you're not front row, if you're not, you know, yeah, right beside it all. And all of yeah. a sudden, for the first time, the entire world has had to just take a breath. And I think that's why I don't mind it so much because there's nothing to miss out on. So you actually start paying attention to the little things again, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm painting our front door and I'm, I'm fixing this thing and yeah. refinishing this piece of furniture and just, you know, watching my, my two-year-old take a nap, you know, and just do all these like little things that are just so small, but really sweet. Um, it's a real shift in our behavior and yeah. our, and, and perspective. Um, and it's also obviously a very hard time for many people um, uh, it, it, on so many different levels. But it is a, it'll be interesting to see how we, as a sort of a human race, come back from this moment and what life will be like after this. You know, I, mean, I wonder what kind of alterations will, will sort of, if there will be any alterations to how we live our lives at, at, once we come out of this um, pandemic. I have faith in it. I really do. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I love history. Um, yeah. And if you look at history, every time there's been a big global trauma, and the last one that you can really point to, I mean, in a way, you can point to 9-11, because it did wake up the world to a problem that was, that was there. But I think it was obviously felt more acutely for people localized in New York. So r truly global, you'd have to look back at like World War II. Yeah, that's what I was thinking devastating yeah. but then the years of prosperity and relative peace and ingenuity that came out of that is remarkable remarkable right and, exactly and I, I think that could happen again i really do yeah um i think it could too so we'll remain hopeful about that you yeah. know i'm gonna uh by the way you know what i've been doing i've been meditating twice a day now good for you and that has been super helpful. And I mean, I have meditated in the past, but not as religiously as I've been doing during this period of time. And that's really helped me. Do you use like, uh, uh, is it like transcendental meditation or do you it follow is. that? It's, yeah. Cool. No, it's just TM. Yeah, yep. straight up. 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the afternoon. And I've found that to be really oh, relaxing. I'll bet. Um, uh, so... Oh, how did you guys do the scene with the lipstick and the carpet of the Oval Office? Oh, my God. <laughs> right? You've got, that, you've got that picture framed, right? I do. I have that picture framed in my office. Um, it is a, that was an amazing, well, that, that whole scene in the Oval, uh, that was in that season two, episode one, as I recall. Yeah. yeah. And that scene... Um, was very physical and it went on and on and on. Remember Reed? Yeah. But we were falling all over each other and do, uh, practically doing handstands and shoes off. And I mean, it was, it was an it was like buffoonery, you yeah. know, times 10. Uh, but then it got crunched down and edited down to be what it was appropriately. So, but God, that we, was, it, we can talk about where that set came from too, right? That was oh, sort yeah, of, of course. Yeah, special that was, set. So that we, was... we, we borrowed that set. We did a sort of, I hate to use the words quid pro quo anymore, but we borrowed the Oval Office set from our buddies at um, House of Cards. House of Cards, and they borrowed our motorcade. That's right. Right? That's exactly right, because we were right. all shooting at exactly the same time, but at that point, we didn't have an Oval Office set. Right. And it was a lot uh, more cost effective to borrow theirs for one scene than to try to build it ourselves. And uh, <laughs> and they had to bring, what? What are you laughing about? I just remember walking into that set and like all that whole soundstage. And you can see it's like that was every single inch of that place was obviously dictated by David Fincher himself. And it was just like so perfect the, the way everything was cut and the, the, the backs of the yes. flats were painted black and like the seams, everything was just perfect. 
and then you came over to our set and it was like you know we have like the flap on top of like the, the the mattress factory where we're shooting just like clang 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 and birds yeah. flying around inside the space yeah we had <laughs> you shot that's right because we were shooting in a warehouse and uh we which was a huge problem from a sound point of view uh yeah. because like if it would rain you would hear the rain on the roof it was a warehouse it was an old mattress factory warehouse as reed said and it was like uh, it was not set up to be a soundstage by any stretch of the imagination. So it was, it was pretty, uh, there's no heat. There's no, he that's right. There was no heat. We were freezing to death. Freezing. It was really, it was yeah. tough. Yeah. It's not great. It was definitely not great. Okay. Wow. We're above 36,000. How great is that? That's How awesome. Great wow. Is that? That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. That's so fabulous. Thank you just so much to everybody who's donated. How can a normal person get politically involved in their community? Do you have any advice for involvement during the upcoming election? Ooh. Well, personally, I believe in, in local action on, yes. on every level, right? Yeah. But um, and this upcoming election obviously is uh, vital and critical to our nation's health and well-being. But, but beyond the actual office of the president, there's so many down ballot uh, candidates that are imperative to get yourself uh, educated about and 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 hopefully vote for the the right person and I, hopefully I, just vote period i think you're exactly right that's what i was going to say i think that the number one thing you can do to involve yourself politically is register people to vote you know it's yeah i don't think people realize how important that is and or, or how many people are just so daunted by the process or confused by the process of simply registering to vote yes they may not know how to go about do it they may not know that they're not registered to vote so if you want right. to get involved in your community contact your local election board volunteer go door to door get people registered let them exercise their right that's right. Good. I'm glad you said that. It's absolutely the case. And it couldn't be more important. I mean, I, I guess right now you can't really, well, you can't do that right now. Although I guess you could make calls and stuff right now. I don't Probably. know. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, well, oh gosh. Anyway, what month is this? April? So we've got April. a few more months. Let, yeah, right. Yeah. What month is this? What day is it? What, you know, I mean, it's ah. like, what the fuck? This is such a weird time, man. God damn it. Um, uh, did S Selena bother to vote after she was elected? Selena would always vote for herself, and I don't think she gave a shit about anything else. That's what I think. Yeah. Unless what about after she left office? After she was done being president, do you think she ever voted again? No. No. I don't think so. I think she couldn't be bothered. Selena was a horrible person so um i uh yeah i don't think she would ever do the right thing like vote um what else i'm trying to think uh did dan have any friends outside of work somebody asked i don't think he ever had any real friends i think he had yeah. colleagues outside of work you know people that he liked to exploit you know, yeah. probably called them friends. I mean, he, he was in a poker game, you know, he, he was part of like a sort of like a, a ring of poker players at one point. Right. I think they were all just self-serving bastards, just the way he was. I don't think anybody... Wasn't there some sort of reference that you had as uh, about Dan and his family? Don't, do you remember uh, what I'm talking about? That he hates his family, I know that. And we and we toyed with the idea. There was one episode where we were, we were going to meet Dan's brother. Oh, we were. Yeah, yeah. Early we on, were, huh? We were gonna. It might have been like season four, even. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. We were we were going to meet Dan's brother, and they just for whatever reason we sort of nixed that bit. Um, but yeah, I think. Remember know, Dan, when we had that scene, Reed, where you talk about running over the dog? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't. I think that was like season three or something like that, and we have that scene. And he was campaign manager, right? Is that season three? I guess. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Because we were because we were in the vice president's office. Right. And 
Um, I, think it was, I think it was four. I think it was oh, four. really? I think so. Wasn't that when she was running? Yeah, maybe so. Oh, but then, but we were sitting on that couch. Remember? Right. Yeah. Becky Martin directed that. That much I remember That's too. Right. Yeah. And uh, in retrospect, and and you talk about I I, I talked about setting something on fire. I don't know. I can't remember it exactly. But then you talk about running over a dog. And for some reason, Selena, uh, and I say for some reason, because Selena was such a terrible person. But in this moment, she found that a, to be a heinous thing, as I recall, right? Did you run over a dog or you killed the dog? I killed the dog. It was a stray dog. And my friends dared, well, Dan's friends dared him to kill this stray dog. And he did it. And he, t and he tells Selena that boastfully, right? And he tells her, he's like, he's like oh my God, like, ah, oh, you know, the hubris yeah. of youth, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's right. Car on fire. People are re reminding us. Car on fire, that's right. That yeah. I, I told you that I uh, set Andrew's car on fire and you told me you killed a dog. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> the most awful people. Um, yeah. Wow, and that was, and that scene was again, a, a you know, in which it seemed like there was some sexual tension between Selena and Dan, but nothing comes from it. And then, of course, oh God, final got, season. Yeah, it got so soured after that. I mean, how do you go from killing a dog moment to like, you know? I know. We got some yeah, new donations. Yeah, new new donators. Okay, who? Uh, Emily Brooke, Nina Atanello, Tracy. Just Tracy, Winston Tang, Anna Kate Sheldon, Dina Fidis, Megan Rack, Constance Pakulis. Thank you guys. That's so great. That's it's so fucking awesome. So I'm gonna ask you one more question that somebody wants to know. They say, Reed, do you have anything in common with Dan? I, I hope not. You He's, don't. No, thank you very much for saying that. You don't, you're a nice guy. Thank you. Thank you. I met, I, I have a funny story about the real Dan, which I've, I've told before. So some, some people out there might've heard the story. No, tell it again. It's a good story. So we all, as a cast, we got invited to the Washington, the DC press correspondence dinner in 2000. Let's when was that? 15? Yeah. 2015. Like that. Obama was still in office. You did that video with Joe Biden, which was right. hilarious. It was really funny. Um, and beforehand, we got invited to sort of like a green room to have cocktails. There's a bunch of like DC movers and shakers. And Tim strikes up uh, a conversation with a guy. Oh, I should, I should, I should back pedal for a second here. Uh, the week before, a Rolling Stone article had come out about Veep and they postulated who they thought the characters real life DC counterparts would be. Right. And those counterparts, because they were in the article, all got invited to the dinner. And so Tim strikes up a conversation with a guy who says, so uh, I guess I'm the Dan, I guess I'm Dan. And Tim says, like, oh my God, that's so funny. You should meet Reed, he's right over there. And the guy says to Tim, why should I go over there? Why doesn't he come over here? Which is perfect. So Tim said, hold on a second. Gets me, brings me over. I meet the guy. And Tim says, you know, uh, I, I read, this is, this is the real life Dan, according to Rolling Stone. And, and the, the real life guy just looks at me and kind of looks me up and down and goes, I guess I see it. And just walks away. It's and I was good. like, I love that. It's, it was it was perfect. It's yeah. so good. It was it's, perfect. Oh my god, I, that is just the most amazing. I wonder what he's doing now, by the way. Uh, I think he's lieutenant governor of Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> that is so fabulous. Yeah. That is so fabulous. Such a good story. I have to say, when I made that video for the um, thingy dingy, the White House Correspondents Dinner, which. God only knows when that'll happen again. But anyway, um, we got to actually shoot in the Oval Office for all of like 15 minutes. I mean, we didn't yeah. have much time. And to walk into the Oval Office 
Uh, do you, have you ever been in in that space, Reed? All the all the time, all the time. No, really, sure. seriously, the no, real yeah. one. No, it is so. Um, I know this word is used a lot, but it is in fact awesome because there's something about the light from those windows. Yeah. Um, that really, and and the fact of it being round like that, it is. It kind of takes your breath away. It really does. I, I was, I was quite. Uh, starstruck, just even walking in. I was starstruck by the actual room itself. I really was when we were in there. Um, but anyway, that was fun. That was That's fun cool. to do. Yeah, that was really cool. That whole experience um, was so surreal. The DC, I, 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 w I was seated between um, the supermodel Linda Evangelista yeah. to my left, and to my right was Nancy Pelosi. Oh. So it was like. The junior high kid in me was like, wow, that's a Linda Evangelista. And then like the grown up political junkie was like, and that's Madam Speaker. <laughs> it was like, it was the weirdest, weirdest mashup of people. Did you so have conversations? Like, were you able to have conversations with both? I did. They were both lovely women. Yeah. Nancy Pelosi yeah. was like, she and her husband were, were lovely and yeah. big fans of the show. Big, very yeah. big fans of the show. Yeah, yeah. They like the show. They do like the show. That's the other interesting thing that we all we often came across is that when we were in DC, people would come up to us and say things like, "Oh my God, uh, I am so, I am the such and such is the Amy of our office." Or yeah. you, I mean, they would they really really glommed on to specific characters. It was pretty incredible, and sometimes in a way that you would sort of be somewhat alarmed by because it was sort of belie the certain behaviors but anyway it was pretty it was fun to get the reaction from dc itself so satisfying too to you know to to work hard on a show and have people not only love it for the entertainment value but yeah you know tell us that we're getting it right it was really yeah cool. i know that was really gratifying for sure um all right well more questions here are there any more questions? Any books that you're reading right now? I'm reading all of Elizabeth Strout, Strout's books. Elizabeth Strout is the wonderful novelist who wrote Olive Kittredge. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm almost finished reading every book she's ever written. I have to say, it has been such a tonic to read her material because I don't know, I like burying my head in the fiction of uh, her storytelling. So have you read Fates and Furies yet? Which one? Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff. Uh-uh. Uh, it's, I, I'm, I'm this far into it, but it is some of the most beautiful prose I've ever read. Like really? she's, it's fantastic. It's really, really, it, it's all, it's got like a, a bit of like a John Irving sort of quality to it and that it's very nostalgic. And it, it takes you back to New England and the sort of like simpler time. But the way she writes is just, you read it very slowly because every single word is so beautifully crafted. She's incredible. I think really? you like it. Yeah, check it out. All right, chance. Fates and Furies. Fates and Furies. Good. Oh, somebody says they love Fates and Furies. Good. Good, it's great so far. Um, but it's a novel, right? It's a novel, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and are you watching anything on TV, by the way? Yeah, here and there. Um, finishing up Narcos Mexico. Finally, uh -huh. which I love that stuff. I love yeah. that stuff. Um, yeah. What was I watching? Uh, my wife and I watched Devs. Did you watch Devs? Sort of sci-fi thing. No, I, I didn't, but I've that. heard it's really good. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, Alex Garland is the writer and director. I really like his stuff. He did Ex Machina. I don't know if you saw uh -huh. that movie, Ex Machina. I'm it's brilliant. It's way out there, but he's got a really unique take on sort of um modern day existentialism but it's like i, I don't want to give anything away because it's it's incredible it's a slow burn but it's really cool visually it's amazing mm. yeah i'm watching i just started watching uh uh what uh watchman on hbo yeah. i hadn't seen any of that she, really cool Re regina king is amazing she's amazing amazing so yeah. satisfying to see her beat the living shit out of people I she can do love, anything yeah, yeah. She can do anything <laughs> um, all right. So, well, I think we've done it. I think we've raised a lot of money, which is yeah. awesome. And we've had a nice chat. So and good to see you. 
it's so good to see you too. I, yeah, I we can't miss wait you guys. to see you. Uh, yeah, I know. In real life, real soon. I hope yeah. it's soonish, right? Yeah. How are your boys? They're fantastic. They're great. great. I've got one here and the other one's in our house in, in um, uh, Los Angeles. And wow. uh, yeah, everybody's hanging in, sort good. of getting into a rhythm now, you know? Good. Yeah. But give my love to Els and to the boys. You got it. Likewise to Brad and yours. Okay, thank you. And thanks for doing this today. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Anytime, anytime. Thank you for spearheading this. You're doing good work. All right. Oh, love you. Bye. See you Bye. later. Love you too. Bye. How do I Bye. click out of this, Reed?